today we will talk a lot about European mobility in the context of COVID-19, uh, keeping the green steering wheel steady. And uh, let me start with Ms. Annika Degen to give us her take on COVID-19 and mobility, what, it, what is actually at stake. Um, so, as it's commonly known, I mean, for our transport companies, the past nine months were did both in freight and especially in passenger transport has decreased significantly. Um, so we have experienced or we are experiencing until the end of the year um, fare box revenue losses in pu local public transport of around 3.5 billion euros. Um, but in recent year, so we see that there is a stronger concern with climate change and air pollution as well as congestion in cities and we really see more and more cities calling for modal shift they want to change the mobility in their territory um, we really advocate for the avoid shift and improve principle there are lots of ways in which avoiding transport can be promoted and um, and really facilitated. Um, we can look at which trips can be avoided simply through better planning or using empty capacities, like thinking twice about which trips are really needed and which could be replaced through video conferencing. Um, there are many ways in which avoiding transport can be explored um, without uh, prohibiting mobility. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, George, and the floor is, no is yours now. In the short term, the crisis reveals all the inequalities of our society, domestic violence, clusters in uh, vulnerable groups and loneliness of older people. And uh, in my opinion, there are three prior priorities regarding transport and mobility. But the first one is the, the question of the security in the transport. Ensure that people can still circulate safely. Uh, second priority is uh, to reserve transport for the people we really need. This is crucial because uh, essential jobs tend to be performed by more vulnerable people. And three, uh, we, will, we want to ensure that the most exposed group, women or the people, self-employed people, must not be left behind during this crisis. And of course, in a long-term perspective, as ecologists, we want the post-COVID world to be different from the pre-crisis situation. So it was that mobility rather than transport. Um, Matthew Baldwin, do you agree? Um, it will be very easy for, for an institution like the European Commission to say, oh, well, everything's off now with COVID. We've got to uh, get the economy back on its feet. We have to uh, uh, get back to the old normal as quickly as possible. And please note that the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, has not taken that line. We have to reduce 90% of our uh, uh, transport emissions uh, by 2050. That means at least a 55% reduction by 2030. And why? Because 25% of our emissions are, are coming from transport, 20% just from road transport alone. So we can't postpone that by one year, by one day. It's a false dichotomy to talk about the economy on the one hand versus uh, um, uh, 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 the Green Deal on the other. We will come with proposals to make all of our modes sustainable. 